Another passionate person is Chick Scott, and um, passionate about the mountains and the history of climbing. And uh, he and several friends actually made the first winter ascent of Cinnaboyne before our, uh, our winter traverse. And I photographed him on an early ascent of Cascade Waterfall in 1975. Since then, we've teamed up to work on several projects having to do with local climbing history. Uh, I first met Banff's poet laureate and historian John White when I began my studies here in 73. He curated and exhibited my photos uh, from the Everest 82 expedition, which was, was the start of my longtime affiliation with the White Museum. It was John who suggested that I team up with my friend uh, Art Toomey of Kimberley to shoot a large format book of the Rockies. Although that never happened, I did collaborate on a long-term photo project to document the slot canyons of Arizona with Art. From 1975 to 1985, we spent a cumulative one year canyoneering with our cameras in tow. Uh, this was a way to shorten Canadian winter. We'd head south in April each year and spend weeks exploring the slot canyons of Arizona and Utah. In an effort to protect the delicate nature of these sandstone canyons, when the photos were published, we gave them pseudonyms, names like Tau Canyon or Owl Hoot Canyon that didn't exist on any map. These days, however, there are detailed guidebooks with maps. You have to make reservations for some of the canyons now that they're so popular. At the time, our photos were fresh as we were among the first photographers in these subterranean oases. So we found markets worldwide for those pictures. And it was Art who uh, introduced me to the large format work of the great Italian mountain photographer, Vittorio Sella. Sella circumhiked Mount Kanchenjunga in 1899 in Nepal, and on the way photographed uh, 7,000 meter Mount Sinilchu. A hundred years later, Bobby and I traced his footsteps, plus launched a expedition to climb this lovely mountain. Uh, the next photo is taken at our high point. <clears throat> Unseasonably warm weather turned us back on the avalanche prone upper slopes. I've never taken my vocation too seriously, as my main interest was and still is to see the world. And photography and filmmaking are almost a byproduct of that process. For those of you who want to make a living at photography, part of the secret is not to go into debt. Don't, don't buy too much fancy equipment, for instance. My tools were really basic, a camera and a couple of lenses. This is the old film camera. The only thing that held me back from achieving any goal was my own laziness and myopia. In spite of my flippant comments about not taking photography too seriously, in order to make ends meet, you have to come up with the goods. This time exposure of an exploding uh, volcano was taken on an expedition to Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula. We would wanted to ski from the summit, uh, but as you can see, it wasn't in good skiing condition. <laughs> Instead, we explored other parts of the peninsula, Many of you have heard of Charlie Russell and Maureen Enns, Albertans, who studied grizzlies for over a decade there. This is a photo that Maureen took of Baiba with Biscuit, a bear that they had rescued as a cub from a zoo in Petropavlovsk and released into the wild. The nice thing about photographs is that they don't need any translation. So as freelancers, we found a market in many foreign publishing houses as well as here in North America. The life of a photographer going off on long assignments, chasing the light for the perfect shot, can be a singular lonely process. Lucky for me, in 1979 at the Canmore Folk Fest, I met the woman who would be my partner in all things wild and wonderful. And that's Baiba grooving on the left. And uh, maybe some of you might recognize earlier incarnations of yourselves. Uh, that's Susan Beckett in the yellow shirt there. 
I wonder if that's Daryl Best plug there. It took a while to learn to work together, but we found that when we hooked up in 1983, our productivity more than doubled as she brought organizational talents to what started out to be a one-man show operating from my father's kitchen table in small town BC. Even though she had no formal training as a writer or a photographer, she developed those skills quickly enough. We formed a great partnership as we traveled the world. The Bow Valley is a very special place for us. It still is. Uh, we called this, this valley home for 20 years, and it's where many of our friends still are. Not only did we use the Rockies as a training ground to strengthen our bodies for expeditions, but also as a big outdoor studio to develop our artistic skills. And so we've tried to keep that ba uh, delicate balance of life and work, seeking inspiration right in our backyard. With a camera always at the ready, we could turn an outing on a nice autumn day with our friend Jeff Boyd from Banff into a source of revenue like the cover of Brian and Bart's Rockies Trail Guide. And by the way, the 40th uh, anniversary celebration is coming up this spring. And if you happen to be in Wild Bill's on the right night, Brian and Bart might buy you a shooter. <laughs> but they're actually planning to have the, the event here at the White, so keep your eyes and ears open. April 30th, I think it is. <laughs> 